can get through it. <laughs> presence of God. You know, the presence of God is everywhere. Even to this day when we don't have power, and it reminds us of old. Job, you know, uh, the scripture that I'm, uh, the message I did today is from Job. Job is a story about who is in charge of the universe. It assumes the existence of two cosmic presences, God and Satan. In a strange sort of science experiment, God permits Satan to rain down all manner of ills upon the head of the grateful Job. To see if he can be made to recant his faith. The only thing God forbids Satan to do is to take away Job's life. Job is rich. Satan takes all of his money. He is the picture of health. The tempter inflicts upon him a dreadful skin disease. He has a wonderful family. The evil one kills Job's children in a natural disaster and drives his wife away in despair. Suddenly, Job finds himself stripped of everything he holds dear, except for life itself. And to him, even life itself has become terribly fragile. A model born of woman, few of days and full of trouble, comes up like a flower and withers, flees like a shadow and does not last. Job 14.1. Job's friends try valiantly to convince him there's nothing left for him to do that it curses God and die. And the Lord Almighty finally appears in person. God then calls off the whole dreadful experiment and restores to Job nearly everything he's lost. Job never has given up on faith totally, but he has certainly wavered. And so the Lord speaks powerfully to his servant's despair and a voice out of the world. Where were you? God asked, when I laid the foundation of the earth, tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? when the morning stars sang together, and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Job 38, 4 through 7. God, here is the great cosmic architect, the general contractor for the whole universe. Who are you? God seems to proclaim. To challenge my design or my oversight of all that I have made. The God who speaks here is the powerful creator, one who would not only assemble the great machine once upon a time and kick it into motion, but who carefully watches over it even now, correcting it imperfections in the fine-tuning its moving parts. There is a story of a preacher who once had a parishioner come into his office, a man he'd counseled through many difficult circumstances. 
the man had made some progress in dealing with his problems, but always he seemed to kind of fall short of the matter. Always he seemed overwhelmed by life. This day, though the man was a little different. He had a smile on his face and a spring in his step. Pastor, he said, with transparent joy, I've got something wonderful to tell you. I've just resigned as general manager of the universe. And it's amazing how fast my resignation was accepted. <laughs> That's the sort of realization Job comes to at the end of his long spiritual struggle. When he repents in the dust and ashes, he is effectively resigning as general manager of the whole universe. That job is already taken. And when silversmiths create their work of fine art, they engrave in a place not easily noticed by placing a tiny letter or a little symbol on it. This is what antique dealers look for as they are asked to appraise the value of a certain object. Say, for example, a silver bowl by Paul Revere. And what is it about our lives that displays the maker's mind? Is it the captive, uh, capacity of our brains? Is it our opposable thumbs that anthropologists insist separates us from most other life forms? Is it the ability to reason creative, creatively? Yet as wonderful as our bodies and minds are, it is not in these that we find the maker's mark. There are some who would seek the maker's mark not in the world within, but in the world without, in the glories of nature. Man is the person who has strolled along the beach at sunset or climbed a mountain peak, or stood mouth wide open at the edge of the Grand Canyon, and confessed this wonder could never have occurred without the intervention of a master artist. And when I look at the heavens, the work of your four fingers, sings the author of Psalm 8, the moon and the stars that you have always established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, models that care for them, yet the manifest mind is not easily seen by all people. There are some, after all, who remain unconvinced of God's existence even after viewing the beautiful wonders of the world. There are some who see random forces at work, even in the painting of the sunset. So where, so where do we find the maker's mind? Not in the glories of nature, but somewhere else, in someone who preceding even creating creation itself. As the Gospel writer John proclaims, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And without him, not once came into being. What has come into being in him was life. 
And the life was the light of all people. Is it in Jesus Christ that we see the Maker's mark? Stamped on creation so that all may know to whom this world belongs? The Maker's mark is not power or having interrelating paths or ingenuity. Is this what we're missing today in this country, in this world? Have we lost the faith in the beauty of love? Let us pray. When we look at the heavens, O oh Lord, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established. We are as filled with awe as the psalmist of old. Yet how swiftly we forget that cosmic perspective as we turn our vision inward and focus only on the pains and the problems of life. Keep us ever mindful that you are Lord and maker of all, that you fashioned us in all creations, <coughs> and that your plan for the universe is still unfolding, as you have intended. Our vision and our faith are not always big enough. When they are not, remind us of your limitations or limitless law. For we pray this in your son's name. Amen. 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 It was an excellent sermon, man. Thank you. You should sermonize in the dark more often. Let us, uh, I know it's going to be chilly here, so let us go right to uh, let's go right to benediction and uh, and let's be able to go out and do what we need to do, and that is socialize and talk and love in the creation that God has provided for us. And you spend time saying goodbye to Mark. Yeah! You guys like that. Thank God he's gone. <laughs> Can we remember how to sing that? Oh, most holy and gracious and loving God, we thank you for this day. Yes, we thank you for this. We can make it without electricity mm. because love is in this church. The world needs to hear that love is in this church. Let us now go in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.